Hey guys, we're going to try this on uh, Mama's new computer. And nice look, it's not even broken. The, both of my old dinosaurs, uh, I think, have had it. So, we borrowed Mama's computer. We loaded on Stan's new IOP program. I had to work out a couple bugs with him. The only thing that you'll see on here that's a little whacked out is our Max Lift. If I change that right now, it'll lock the program up and it won't do calculations. So we're going to leave it at 0.7 right now. The compression ratio is at 11. So our outputs will probably come out a touch higher than they really are. Okay, as far as our port volume, 178. Valve was 2.002. Stem is 315. Throat, 1.73. Center line length 5.16. Exhaust pipe used? Nope. Uh, bore diameter 411. That's the bore diameter of my bore adapter. Now I have a 318 head, head gasket above that that's smaller. Whatever the 318 head gasket is. I didn't I wasn't sure which way to put that, so I just left it at 411. That's where I have several other tests set for. The other problem with this is it it's not uh, it's not loading my older my older tests into this. Uh, Stan's last couple of flow programs. As soon as you load it in, it sees the old files and you're able to use them. This one isn't. I'm not sure what's up with that. I have to talk to him about that. Okay, exhaust port, 64. Quite a small exhaust port, especially when you look at the exhaust port length. It's 3.27. It's a longer port, and it's not really big. And uh, when we start going through the air speeds and uh, the flow saturation on that, you, you will... Uh, You'll definitely see what I'm talking about. All right, exhaust valve is 1.625, stem 0.315. We have our radiuses, we have our sizes, which are all from my scribbled page. Okay, everything is on this page. All the info, all the shapes, you name it, it's on that somewhere. I was thinking of... Uh, doing this is a direct comparison to the performance trend uh, flows that I did, but the way this is set up with the port lengths and everything, in order to do that, I have to add in the port lengths and the volumes of the intake manifold and so forth, and I wasn't going to do that. So these are our, our 11th cut flows. Okay, some of the important stuff we need to know here is we maxed out at 500 lift at 280 CFM, right? Our port saturates about, our exhaust port saturates about 195.1 at about 500. And if we scroll over to the black, the black lines, we get to, to see our exhaust to intake flow ratio, right? As the lower lips lifts where we're almost eight we're 85 86 80 88 percent way more exhaust flow than we need right and i think i said that early on developing this head the exhaust is already too good for the intake port the intake port wasn't uh wasn't responsive to change at all but the exhaust port got really good really fast and was really small and i decided to keep it kind of like that so even at the higher lifts, let's go to our 500. We're at 0.69. Okay, 0.69. Some guys would consider that low. I don't because the rest of the curve is quite good. So I'm going to say awesome with that. We can also take a look at our port velocities, right? We're going to get a graph on this, but... If we take a look at our intake, 319 is our max at 500. That's pretty darn close to the 320 I was looking for. Lots of other guys may use different air speeds, but uh, that worked out really well. And 
at that lift, it will definitely ram the cylinder really well. Now take a look at our exhaust port speeds. Ouch. Excessively fast, right? Well, maybe. Do I have any doubt that I could make that port bigger and get more flow out of it? None. Okay. Would I rather have a small fast port? Yes. Especially on a street application. It's going to be hot street application, but it's still a street application. All right, let's change pages. Okay, second page. Take a look at it. What are we going to talk about? We can talk about our swirl. Swirls have been inputted. Notice how much swirl we have down towards the end. It kind of goes off the deep end, right? Almost 4,000 RPM swirl. The uh, last... Two numbers on the flow sheet are all exactly the same at those lifts. I know Stan explained to me how to eliminate those, but my head is kind of like granite, so it just doesn't sink in. Let's take a look at, uh, we'll compare this test to this test, because I don't have anything else loaded on this program itself, so let's take a look at it. Okay. So here's our CFM. We max out about 280, which is right on our blue line, which is our 0.5, 0.25D line. Isn't that interesting, right? Because after that, we don't gain any more area, right? You're at max area with that lift at that point, okay? Which changes the way our flow goes. Notice we actually lose flow after that point. And our exhaust is really interesting starts off really well even too well and then it gets a little lumpy and bumpy and then it totally plateaus okay almost at our 0.25 D line right which is a little over five, uh, 400 lift okay let's move on to the next screen okay our CFM per square inch that tells us how effective our valve uh, seat shapes are. Okay, this did not have a super fancy valve job, but I did a nice job on it. And you can see the exhaust that has my radius on it is pretty darn uh, effective, okay? That is 130. <laughs> 130, yeah, not bad. Okay, as DV would say, see how those lines flatten out towards the end? He considers that not having enough bias. Okay, if we put more bias into that, those two curves will tilt up. And in order to do that, we would need bigger ports. Okay, and on these, on this Chinese head, I actually have plenty of room on the exhaust. I could have made the exhaust a lot bigger, but the intake bowl is about where I want it on a street application. And I want it nice and thick so we don't have problems if it ever overheats or anything. You know, this is going to Australia. I know it gets hot there. It needs to, it needs to be durable. Okay, coefficient of discharge. Pretty good on the exhaust, not nearly as good on the intake. And they both peter out, basically. I mean, the intake really doesn't even look good at 0.5. 5.8. Not really happy about that. But that's where we're having uh, the problem with that short side radius because the way that port is bent, most of the flow wants to go around the short side. Even though they made it very wide and I widened it some more, that's, and that is getting to the point where it's really fast. We could, uh, we could take a look back at our flow sheet and we could look at that. Okay, we're 450 in the center and 425 on the cylinder wall. And there really isn't any way to get that uh, better without starting to worry about casting thickness. So it's going to have to be the way it is. Okay, very interesting graph, guys. Very interesting. A lot of info right on this graph. The intake port speeds... Pretty close to right on the money where you want them. The exhaust port, super fast. Maybe even too fast. Let's get some input on, on what you guys think about that. 
Now, remember, if I put a bigger port in it and make it flow even more, our exhaust to intake relationship changes even more. Now, this customer did get in touch with Mike Jones and uh, Mike Jones did some work on it. He's he's having trouble getting uh, camshaft cores for uh, for the Chrysler right now. So he may not be able to grind one, but uh, he might be able to at least point us in the right direction. Uh, we'll find out. Okay, we're going to move on. Okay, so this is our port energy. It actually looks like our intake is carrying a lot more port energy than our exhaust, but that tends to be the way they, they work out. In any case, nearly 25 on the intake is a really good number, and about 13 or so on the exhaust is fair. You would think with that really high-speed air, right, because when you're calculating the energy, velocity is squared. I'm surprised that it the exhaust didn't go a lot higher on this. But see, this, this equation, when it, it calculates, uses the port length. When we go to the next frame, let's take a look at the next frame. Okay, the port energy density does not take into consideration the, the length of the port in the calculation. And notice how much higher our energy is due to that really high-speed air, okay? In any case, if we take a look at either one, I'm going to say we have more than enough velocity to get this covered. More than enough. In fact, we could have put bigger ports in it. In fact, the application really kind of needs a better head, right? It would have been a lot easier and a lot less work to just start off with a better head design. But it was an experiment. The, uh, the customer wanted to see what we could do with these. And uh, I think we're fairly successful. Uh, hopefully he has my buddy build the engine and we'll be able to dyno it. And that'll be a lot of fun. I may even take a, I may even take a road trip to Mississippi to be there and do that. We'll see. Okay, our vo effective velocity is the airspeed at the seat. I think I got that covered. <laughs> Nearly 450. Wow. All right. We should talk about the red line and the blue line, and uh, that's the 0.25D line. And notice what happens after that, right? On the exhaust, we pretty much plateau. We're, we're done. We can't get any more area at that point, and that port pretty much saturates. And on the exhaust, right, we go over our 0.25D, and she starts to lose it right away. All right, our swirl graph is a little... It's a little strange. It does have that dip in the middle, but we have more than enough. By the time we pass our 25D line on the intake, we've got we've got 2214 as far as swirl, which is uh, more than enough. Now remember, this is just the cylinder head. When we bolt the intake on it, it does change. But in any case, I don't think swirl will be a problem. We're going to get a nice burn on this. Okay, our effective SAE coefficient of discharge. I think they probably could have been better after the 0.25D line, but other than that, they look good to me. Stan added a bunch of stuff to this program. I'm going to have to spend some time with it before I uh, talk about it a whole lot. That may take some time, so be patient with me. All of the percent changes you would need two different curves in uh, inputted so maybe the next project I get I will do all of the measuring and work up on a completely stock port and then we can do the percent change on a finished port and uh, that'll be interesting to take a look at Okay, the program calculates our mean area, 2.105. Let's move that over. Okay, our port mean area, 2.105. Our Mach number is 0.55, the speed of sound, which is what the program is set for. We can change that. If you think you have a really good port design that handles the higher airspeeds, you can change that Mach number, and it will 
it will change your uh, outputs. I did put it in for an 11 one compression. Oh, CFM peak is not correct. Let's fix that. Okay, I did the bore and stroke to make it work out to a 387. I think I have that right. If not, it's only off a tiny bit. And then we can start talking about what it tells us. Grip. Okay, I can't do anything without a pointer. So this is our mean piston speed, right? 3781, that's good. Our peak CFM is 280. Best torque output, 555. I don't think that was much different than our performance trends torque output. But remember, the performance trends I goofed, I put all the inputs in with uh, the intake manifold and the carburetor. Okay, cylinder head port limitation, 555 horsepower, uh, horsepower. Cylinder head airflow horsepower limitation, 711. All right, we take a look over it. We have to read these boxes. I forgot that. Okay, this horsepower capability engine, assuming brake specific consumption, 5.5 pounds per hour. Corrected for compression used. Best result number should be about 5% more than the port. Okay. This port area, limited power set by limiting port speed. Stated Mach number one is the speed of sound. Okay. This, this figures out for the Torque Master cams. If you're interested in Torque Master cams, you get in touch with Stan. He'll hook you up. Uh, you should be able to get in touch with him right through his website, Stan Weiss. So just type in Stan Weiss, it'll come right up. Okay. Here was, here's where it gets a little more interesting. Torque per cube, 1.43, not bad. Torque per liter, 87.2. Horsepower per cube, 1.83. Okay. I guess that's all right. Seems a little low to me. But it is a street application, right? Oh, let's take a look at our peak, peak horsepower RPM, 6,000. A little bit lower than I was expecting. But then again, we don't know exactly what the Torque Master is, is applying, okay? We were figuring about 7,000 shift, right? Peak horsepower around 6,500. So in any case, I think it's plenty for a street engine. And uh, it'd be nice to have a good conversation about this in the uh, comments. I probably forgot a bunch of stuff, but uh, that is the way it is. And it's an 18 minute video already. If you watch this whole video, Got to give you guys credit. All right, guys, we're going to finish off with this graph because I think it's cool. And I appreciate you guys hanging out. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.